All right, welcome back. Uh, so last part, now really the last part, um, we're going to do continuous listening, uh, which is how Firebase is, is really supposed to work. One thing about continuous listening is you need to add observers and then you need to be responsible for removing observers. That's just one thing you need to think about anytime you're doing continuous listening because these observers are very sticky. So like if you were to show a view controller and add a bunch of observers uh, and then leave it but not take them off and then come back to it, then you'd have double listeners, right? And then leave it and come back and then all of a sudden you'd have triple listeners. I should say triple observers, but triples of stuff. So you need to always pick a strategy for if you add a continuous observer, when are you going to remove it? And it's your responsibility as the programmer to make sure you do that. Uh, I'm gonna choose to, in this app, put them on and view will appear um, and take them off on view will disappear. So those that are a nice pair, they're easy to use. So those are the two functions I'm gonna use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here uh, and I'm just gonna kind of stub that out a little bit. Uh, so it returns void and its view will appear. Um, I like to use code completion uh, as much as possible. You should also get in the habit of calling super uh, view will appear. That's just a good habit to be into, right? Uh, and then very same thing for view will disappear. I won't make you watch me type all of it, uh, but you can see there's kind of the, the placeholders. So this is kind of my uh, add observers. Um, and then this is my uh, remove observers. Great. Um, so I'll make a little room for my body there. Um, so it's up to you on how you want to set this up, but this is a nice, simple way to do it. Um, another thing is if we want to add something and remove it later, uh, we're going to have to save a reference to it. Uh, so let's go add a property for this. Uh, so the property uh, that we're going to add is uh, not an object. It's just it's kind of like line 15 there. It's actually just a number at the end of the day. But it's a fur database handle is what it is. Um, and we're just going to give it a name, uh, favorite number uh, observer. I think in the notes I called it value event change listener or something like that. Um, but it's just kind of a reference uh, to this observer so that when we add it, we'll be able to take it off later. So I'll say self.favorite number observer. Uh, and definitely, you know, use autocomplete as your friend. So self dot number ref, um, and we'll just start typing observe because that's kind of what we did last time. Last time we did single. This time we're not going to do single. We're going to say event type, um, and it should be the top one here that it's autocompleting that has like the fewest parameters. So just like the uh, the block. And then what I want to do here is I want to say the event type is actually uh, the same as it was before. So I kind of clicked on it and hit enter, uh, but I want event type value. Great. Uh, and then for the block, yikes, that's formatting ugly. Uh, maybe I'll do that. All right, there I thought with the formatting a little bit just to make it a little, look a little better. Um, and the things we're going to do here are actually similar to what we did before. Um, and I'm lazy. Uh, so I'm going to copy what I did before because I've already kind of sort of done most of this once. Um, and I'm going to just paste it from below up into here and change things that need to be changed, right? So the first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to check to see if something went wrong. Uh, so the value of the snapshot was null, something went wrong. Not even going to change the message. I think that's great. Um, and then uh, it might give you null or it might give you real data. I'm going to take off those comments. Uh, if it does give you real data, obviously we don't want to set the favorite color. Uh, we want to set the favorite number. The favorite number you can see is a long, uh, so we're going to have to do some type of casting here. Uh, and so what you really want to do is you want to say dot long value. Um, it's kind of a pain to do that though because your compiler isn't isn't helping you any, right? So I'm just going to say uh, number as object. Um, and so that's my snapshot value. Um, and then now that I've kind of done it that way, now I can just say number is object dot long value. Great. And obviously there's some, some checking for errors and things that we could do here as well. Um, and we want to say update the favorite uh, number label. 
Great, so we went ahead and we implemented the insides of it uh, first. I think in the slides I did the removal first, uh, but we implemented the insides first because eh, we needed to get it done at some point. Let's talk about removing it because we're responsible for removing it. In this app, it doesn't matter. If we just left it on there, it'd be fine. But I want to set kind of best practice, right? So in order to remove it, you say, what is the reference that it was put on? Uh, and then we say, remove um, observer with handle, uh, and we just pass in that handle. Um, again, here, I was just trying to show you best practice. It turns out uh, that there's also another function, uh, <laughs> which you're going to kind of laugh. Uh, but it's just like remove all observers, right? So we totally could have just used remove all observers, um, and then we wouldn't have had to have saved a reference, we wouldn't have had to made a property. Um, I chose to do it with you the hard way, um, just because it feels more elegant to me, um, just because like in a really big app, you only want to take away the things that you added, right? If somebody else is doing something, you don't want to mess with them. So I tried to do it what I would consider the most elegant way, which is to only remove uh, what I added. So the cool thing about this is view will appear is gonna call when your app launches, and you're just gonna be listening all the time for changes. Um, and if there are ever any changes, you're gonna update the UI, um, which is sneaky. Uh, so let's, let's see it work here. So, so, so I said it's sneaky, and then we'll talk about why I consider it sneaky. Um, so first off, you'll notice that it worked before we even started. Uh, and what you notice worked is that it started off by saying one, right? So I clicked increment um, and it, it uh, went to two right away. So first off, you'll notice that things are fast. So if I click like increment, it goes to five. If I do it 10 times fast, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, you can see it, it kept up uh, and everything was fine, right? Um, and decrement obviously works as well. So if I decrement into the negatives, no big deal. Um, I think that is so cool. Um, and in fact, what's, what's even cooler is like, let's say you had two of these phones up. So if I had a phone in my pocket um, and I was also clicking increment and decrement in there, um, you would see it changing just the same. If I change it there, uh, you can see that it just updates in the app right away. Um, and that, that lag, I think, is just amazing. It's one of the things that makes uh, Firebase really powerful. We use Firebase to control robots, like driving them around, uh, just because like that time to push it to the cloud and then the time to say, hey, there was a change, what's the new data? It's just, it's so fast that you can use it to drive a robot around, which I think is so cool. So we showed you this like pushing uh, and single pool purely because that's how most uh, like servers work, right? So like if you look at like, all RESTful APIs, all RESTful APIs are so powerful. Um, I mean, this is what RESTful APIs do. They do single pools. Um, and if you wanted to like know the data change, you'd have to like use like Firebase cloud messaging or Google cloud messaging. We don't have to worry about any of that here uh, because we just, we know um, when it changes right away because that's a built-in feature that Firebase has provided from day one, right? That's their whole like company model is it's a synchronous database which uh, is just great, I love it. So yeah, so Firebase, if you're not sold yet, hopefully you are now, uh, no backend code at all, so it makes getting started trivially easy. Um, synchronous databases, uh, which I think is what we really showed the power of here. Um, we haven't even shown the power of auth, which makes Firebase cool, um, or of hosting, um, and it's just, it's a really neat product to work with, and I'm excited about being able to use it in this course. All right, so that's our simple app uh, for favorite things. Uh, we're gonna actually end this app here, and as we keep going in the unit, we're gonna switch apps. We're gonna switch over to Movie Quotes next because it's gonna show you how do you work with um, arrays of like repeated data where they're the same. All right, hopefully you enjoyed uh, the, the favorite things. If you're in the class, you're gonna have to do the steps to submit it, uh, and then we'll see you next time uh, where we're gonna talk about data. Thank you.